السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفى وبعد سنسو هذا بيوركو الكمباني هي مقيمين شيخ يحيى إبراهيم أنوار إبراهيم you just happened to have the last names oh I'm Ibrahim oh yes same country and شيخ أبو بكر الصديق so we've been talking about those who are not feeling well, especially those who have uh, chronic ailments and suffering for years, and Allah knows for how long more they would have to suffer and so on. So we'll begin with uh, my Habibi. Give a message to those who are suffering, those who are seriously ill, a message of hope. And also from our experience, how some people survive fatal diseases. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum to everyone. MashaAllah, lovely to have you guys uh, uh, this time of the morning. We just completed Salat al-Fajr. And MashaAllah, it's an amazing gathering. One thing I have learned uh, over time is to have hope in the mercy of Allah. And the best hope is that when mankind has given up and you still have hope in the miracle and the mercy of Allah. I personally have seen people who were told by medicine that they have no chance of survival and they are still alive. So my brothers, my sisters, if you are unwell, terminal, or whether it's just a, you know another sickness, serious or not, ask Allah for cure and have conviction in your heart that Allah is able and capable because He is. If He created you in the first place, then to cure you is a minor thing, you know. And there is always a cure on earth. It's just that we sometimes don't know. So to have hope in the mercy of Allah, that's one. To call out to Him, it brings you closer and closer to Him. He loves it. When you have lost hope in the whole world, you are still calling out to Him. And you say, no, 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 with Allah, we don't lose that hope. Allah is able. That ibadah is a very, very big ibadah. So even if you don't get the cure at the end of the day, the elevation of your status because of the dua that you've been making is something you will never regret. May Allah grant it to us. Secondly, I have seen cases of people who uh, are cured. I give you one example. There was a brother, the doctors gave him a few days to live. And someone came up to him and told him, you know what, try alternative therapy, try this. In fact, there was a particular case of a brother with cancer. And they asked him, to consider the medical, uh, you know, they call it the medical, the CBD of the cannabis, the medical uh, extracts mm -hmm. from the cannabis. It's not the social smoking, please. And it's not just, you know, oh, we're going to have cannabis, it's okay. It's not okay. But there is the THC and the CBD. One has a slightly intoxicating uh, ingredient or, or it's on that level and the other one doesn't. Nonetheless, they gave him this alternative therapy. They asked him to change his diet to a total alkaline diet and be disciplined what you eat, what you drink and so on, what to have. And a very short period of time, his tumors began to diminish and he today he's alive. And I know this brother mm -hmm. and not just one. After that, many of the brothers and the sisters with cancer. They went into this THC treatment. In fact, some of the Mashaikh were asked about it. That you know, it has a slight intoxication in it. Uh, it is not permissible unless there is a there is a tremendous need, a dire need. But still, make sure that you seek advice from the scholars around you on a, on particular cases. It's not just a blanket ruling to say, guys, go and do it. Mm. But the, the idea here is to present. Uh, the, the fact that there are alternatives sometimes you need to know it's not just uh, what you know people who make you lose hope completely you have five minutes to live you have five days to live you have a month to live and so on in in their expertise perhaps it might be right but remember for Allah it's not the case so we consider alternatives and we don't give up hope so I hope that what I have just said can inspire you number one to have hope to make dua number two is to try different types of medication to read up on the sicknesses you may have and to ask uh, different people sometimes not just people from one particular field but perhaps those who might be uh, doing the alternative medication and so on and the last thing I want to say is while you're ill you're still alive try your best to be productive in that condition what it does it may distract you from the sickness number one number two is 
you are doing good deeds while you are in bed perhaps or while you might not be feeling that well sometimes those deeds can probably be better in quality and maybe even quantity than the deeds you did while you were healthy alaikum. I just wanted to speak about uh, the power of the mind uh, one of the ways that medical scientists test the viability of, of drugs and drug trials is that they'll use a placebo, which is they'll give a sugar pill instead of a real pill or a medication that isn't actually a medication to see, do people uh, respond to the non-medicine in the same way that they respond to the medicine? Which tells you two things, that when they're doing the trials, they don't really know, is this medicine gonna work, is it not? The second, of course, it also tells you that there is a power to the mind because there are a significant number of people who when their heart is committed to getting better, when they feel within themselves that they have an avenue for healing, when they are convinced that maybe this medicine is going to be the silver bullet that cures me, they, even if it isn't medicine, they do get better in many, many cases. And I want you to know that having a, a healing mind uh, is very therapeutic for other parts of the body. And this is something consistent with the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We just prayed Fajr here, mashallah. We are encouraged as Muslims to say, Raditu Billahi Rabbah, wa bil Islami Dina, wa bi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Nabiya wa Rasulah. I'm content with Allah in whatever condition Allah has put me in, content with my faith, content with the religion of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that this mantra, this repeated statement that we say out loud, is meant to put in our heart that even if the darkness surrounds me, I have the light of faith. Even when I feel alone, Allah is second with me. Even when I don't feel that I have a friend, Muhammad وسلم, Sunnah suffices me in life. So be content with Allah. You will find that that is the quickest way for Allah to allow you to progress in life and to move forward in life in whatever adversity and hardship you and I find ourselves in and know that those tests that are apparent to us are easier than the tests that we're not aware of. SubhanAllah. Sometimes we're tested with prosperity and health and happiness and contentment, and that becomes a greater test for our akhirah than that we are challenged in the immediate world, but we are connected to Allah with our dua and our commitment of love to the way and the tradition and the path of our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma rabbi al-nas idhab al-ba'as, ishfi anta shafi, shifa an la yughadir saqama. Oh Allah, you're the Lord of mankind. You are the provider of healing. Send your healing upon those who are in need of it, O oh Allah, Amen. and remove from them this impurity and hardship and give them vigor after their weakness and loss of strength. Allahumma amin. 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 Habibi, brother Abu Bakr. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as salam. It's an honor to be seated with the Mashayikh and uh, after Fajr today having this conversation. And one thing that comes to mind is uh, the narration of Nabi Ayyub. Um, Nabi Ayyub, a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one who was known to do good, one who was sent to guide his people but yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him with ailment or with this illness which lasted for many years sometimes you could do a lot of good and you could have a lot of good in you but when Allah tests you this is something for you to to really reflect on and say okay is this a means of blessing or drawing closer to Allah is my patience going to reward me and certainly this will happen to you that if you are doing good and Allah does bring such a trial before you, then it is a further means of elevating you in his sight. Remember Nabi Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam for his patience, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced everything that he felt he had lost and brought it back in many folds. But it was that patience that was most important when everything he thought of was just the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we remember the very beautiful dua when he called unto Allah, Rabbi anni musani abdul wa anta arhamur rahimin. He kept turning back to Allah, kept remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in our state and for anyone who finds themselves in any state where, whether a terminal ailment or one that isn't, whenever we turn back to Allah in such a condition, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always bring away 
out of that difficulty and that trial. And just like the sheikhs have said, you know, for you to hold on to Allah in a time of trial, this is the best thing. A trial that brings you closer to Allah is better than prosperity or any blessing that takes you further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's something that we must always hold on to. SubhanAllah, sometimes when we're ill, because you don't have strength to even sin or to look at anything of sin, your only thought is to see how to earn the pleasure of Allah and regain your strength again and possibly become a better person through that ailment. And that's what has happened with many people, that when Allah tests them with ailment and they become better, they end up getting better and also become a better worshiper. Jazakum Allah wa khayran. Where to go? As a matter of fact, I want to tell you that Muftiman Muftiman would like to share with you some facts about a beautiful book we share, which was authored by the cameraman. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. MashaAllah. Let me tell you a story. Since we are on the topic, and I just saw this book in front of me and I remembered. Brother Wa'il, the one who's holding the camera right now, he's holding the phone and we're all speaking, mashallah, he went through many challenges. One of them was, one day suddenly he found himself, you know, without any prior warning, almost paralyzed, hit down, because of a challenge he had in his back. Suddenly, he never expected it, it just came. And while this sickness and illness was, uh, at its peak, he wrote a book. Look at this. This book says, My Wheelchair, My Wheelchair, this journey of his. And this book, if you, I've read it, it's simple, it's straightforward. It gives you step by step. Get it, get it, read it, and understand it, and develop your hope. It shows you regarding the productivity I spoke about. The book itself is evidence. It gives you what you will go through, your emotions, your times, how to lift yourself up, what to expect. You know, the, the, the chapters, if I go through them, it's just amazing here. Look, he says the emotional battles, he speaks about it. Imagine the emotional battles. How must it have felt? May Allah protect all of us. And I'm sure you know what I'm talking about when we say emotional battles, the doctors giving you confusing results and sometimes... One day this way, one day that way, you don't know where you're heading, it's painful. And the one says, pain to gain. You know, there is a, a sentence, they say, no pain, no gain. This is similar, it's pain to gain. And how you have to have realistic positivity, the contentment and so on, the search. And it's amazing. When Allah granted him miraculous recovery as well. Miraculous meaning, I think there were days when... And he was suddenly wheelchair bound. There were days when he might have thought, you know what, this thing might not ever get better. But anyway, let's keep going. Every time I spoke to him on the phone, in order to comfort him, I received comfort myself. That's how it was. So, mashallah, the brother, we have to give credit where it is due. This book, I would recommend it very strongly. It's, it's uh, entitled My Wheelchair, and it's regarding the journey um, of getting back on his feet. So I thought I'd just mention this since we're on the topic. Barakalafi. Turn the camera to you. Let me turn the camera Let me, I can't talk now. We have to turn the camera to you. I can't. Turn the camera now to Sheikh Wa'il, Sheikh Wa'il, Fadl. Bismillah. Just the Sheikh brought so much memories because I was. Uh, Bismillah, Bismillah, Sheikh. So it's uh, uh, one one year I couldn't feel my waist down. Um, we cheers, Allah. As the Mufti said, exactly. He said what exactly I felt, and that was uh, that's it. Uh, the rest of my life would be this way. Uh, but Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, it was uh, Sheikh Haytham Haddad, one of our beloved oh, Mashayikh, oh. who called me one day, and uh, I'm crying on the phone and. Um, Complaining about the pain, the physical, the emotional, all these things were like, I remember my wife telling me, stop screaming. <laughs> she, I can't, like it's not me screaming really, it's the, the pain. And oh, Sheikh Haytham Haddad, I'm complaining to him the same way how I used to complain to my wife. And he told me something very interesting. He said, why are you complaining? <laughs> I will never forget this. Actually, this is the phone call that got me to write my book.
May Allah bless you, Sheikh Haiti. He said, we always focus on the, on the pain, but we don't remember the patience. We don't remember the, the reward associated with the pain. He said, Alhamdulillah, say Alhamdulillah, you have that amount of pain that will elevate your status if you demonstrate with patience. Another thing that I wanted to mention also is to remember the reality of this dunya. My brothers and sisters in Islam, this dunya was not meant to be a paradise, was not meant to be a place of comfort. It is meant to be a, a trial, you know, a, a place of trials and tribulations. SubhanAllah. لَقَدْ خَلَقَنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدٍ this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in a continuous state of toil and tribulations. So if we understand the reality of the dunya, then we are, when we are struck with, with calamities of that nature, we will understand, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. We all belong to Allah and to Him we shall return at the end of the day. So you better return to Allah in a state of patience than despair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you ease those who are physically mentally emotionally psychologically are going through challenges remember it is meant to be this way do you think just because you are a believer and you said you will not be tested allah tested the people before you including the prophets the Prophet Muhammad was burying his dear son. Can you imagine a little son? And he was demonstrating his emotions to everyone. <laughs> My eyes are shedding tears. My heart is shattered. But we only say what is pleasing to Allah. And this, I want to end with this. Express your humanity. Cry, scream. Don't listen to my wife's advice. Scream if you, if you are going through this. So, like, express. You are a human being. You can't pretend to be something else. So express your humanity, but act in accordance to what, to what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the only thing. And that's why we need each other. You see, one phone call from Sheikh Haytham al-Haddad changed my mindset completely about my condition. And as a result, alhamdulillah, I can walk, alhamdulillah. Yes, I have some numbing, and some people say, why are you limping? I say, are you kidding? This is the best thing ever. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Yes, he had oh, similar condition. Yeah. 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 So everyone was expecting to hear the news of his uh, departure at any moment. But subhanAllah, then uh, a year here, I meet him in a conference, and he's racing to the Bashir. <laughs> 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 back condition. He had similar back condition. In addition to a tumor. And so on. In fact, this uh, live broadcast was meant to encourage those who are in pain that you're not alone and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to raise your rank and also wants to forgive your sins and if there is nothing in being tested with the severe ailment and pain uh, but to wipe out your sins it would be more than sufficient it's very very satisfactory but there is even more behind that Alhamdulillah I want to say one more thing Shay. you know some people ask can I make dua because of my severe pain and what I'm going through that, that I die so Allah. the answer is you make a dua oh Allah keep me alive for as long as you know life is better for me because there might be moments within that pain and within that struggles where your status will be so much elevated had you died before that then what so you, you don't know perhaps during your pain, and you might be cured. I mean, we have hope in the cure. But during that pain, your status is so much elevated, and Allah may take you after that. He may take you whenever He wants. So you say, oh Allah, take me away when you know that it's better for me to go and keep me alive for as long as you know that life is better for me. That's actually a sunnah dua. So I, I just thought I'd mention that. Because many people ask, Sheikh, can I... Uh, can I please, can you pray for me that Allah takes me away? That's no. not a, a, a dua. I'll let Allah do what He knows mm. is best for you. Mm. Uh, that's what it is. Brother, why? Where, can I, can people get this on Amazon? Yeah, it's, it's on Amazon. Amazon. So, <laughs> my yeah, wheelchair. My wheelchair, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It's an e-book and physical. Yeah, because yeah, they were asking actually but in the comments. the book in your hand, yeah. it actually feels so much better. Uh, you know, when you read it, you already, exactly. you already yeah. start feeling the book. Uh, yeah. But still, uh, inshallah, may Allah grant it. Jazakallah. Jazakallah. Uh, the Lord in the Sound Hadith and the Lord of 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 the Lord
But if he is really cornered where he doesn't have any other choice, then let him invoke Allah as follows. اللهم توفني إن كان في الوفاة خيرا لي وأحيني ما كان في الحياة خيرا لي. So if you know that uh, being uh, still alive is better for me, then keep me alive. And if you know that taking my soul unto you is better for me, then take my soul unto you. So basically, once again, you render it back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, the matter of not losing hope and having full confidence and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in His cure is related to the level of your iman. When you read in the Quran, إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Verily, Allah is able to do all things. He is capable to do all things. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَفْعَلُ مَا يَشَاءُ Allah does whatever He wills. I remember once uh, one of our colleagues, and he's a doctor, had phoned me for a legal fatwa because his father was hospitalized and he reached to the point where he was on life support. So as a doctor, he said, uh, my father is uh, clinically deaf. So basically the life support and the tubes are keeping his vials. Otherwise, if we remove them, he's dead. I said, in this case, if nothing is working in his body, there is no point of leaving the life support for him. So when they removed it, um, basically his children and grandchildren were crying and they announced that he's dead. But guess what? A year later, I was leading the Taraweeh prayer in the States, and I met Salam, and I found that guy was praying behind me, Ba'isha, rather Taraweeh, and for the whole month of Ramadan, MashaAllah, so to say that somebody khalas is dying or terminally ill, only belongs to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and do not hesitate, don't you feel reluctant to pray for somebody with shifa, assuming now not, not a chance. This is actually an indication of weak iman and lack of trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't want to take much of your time, but wallahi, I know of a woman who is terminally ill and they gave her a few months to live and she had uh, a terminal a, a tumor. Subhanallah, she totally refused to undergo any radiation or chemo when she said, why don't you save the money and send me for Umrah so that the last thing I will do before I die uh, you know, I would see the Kaaba, I've never seen it. So in order to fulfill her wish, anyway, she's dying. She went and she was so into the dua, so sincere in asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon drinking from Zamzam water, when she heard that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Zamzam lima shuri badah, inna ta'amu tu'am wa shifa'u suqm. Zamzam is not just a water, it's a blessed water. It is for whatever intention you drink it with. It is uh, feeding whenever you drink it with this intention, nutrient. And it is also a cure if you're sick and you drink it with this intention and ask Allah for cure. Wallahi, wallahi, she was cured and she survived. Uh, years there, her daughter died and she's the one who's looking after her grandchildren. Allah. Up until today. And this is more than 10 years ago. So we, may, uh, we, we need to trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to understand that everything happens for a reason and if there is nothing in being sick other than getting close to Allah because sickness for the believers definitely brings them closer to the Almighty Allah. It will be more than sufficient. Jazakumullah khairan kathiran, love you all for the sake of Allah. This all make dua for those who are in pain, for those who are suffering whether our parents, our spouses, our children, our loved ones, or those even whom we do not know. As you know, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do the congregation and the prayers and the dua for everyone. And it's even more rewarding. Now yeah, it's your time to make the dua. MashaAllah. Shafaakum Allah wa afaakum. And before we even say anything, my beloved brothers and sisters, many times when you are in the condition of desperation, the dua you will make in that condition holds the greatest strength. And is it not Allah who cures those uh, or who responds to those who are in desperate need? And He is the one who, uh, you know, cures or removes the calamity.
So this is Allah. Remember to grant, I mean, to, to make that dua at the time of desperation. There is a difference between a time of ease and you're asking Allah. And when you're desperate, it's on another level. It, it, it brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, we ask Allah Almighty to grant cure to all those who are sick and ill. We ask Allah Almighty to grant hope to those who feel hopeless, to grant goodness to those who are going through their struggles. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is always there and he will definitely grant you that cure. Uh, Barakallah feekum. And we had a very beautiful session. In fact, when Dr. Muhammad just suggested that we do this, uh, you know, we didn't expect our, uh, this type of speech to come Allah. out from everyone. Allah. But sometimes <laughs> uh, Allah grants it tawfiq. And we ask Allah for that to be. Jazakumullah khair. Qulukum bihada. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, whoever visits a sick person then supplicates in his or her presence seven times the following invocation, most definitely they will be cured. Unless if their destiny has been ordained. So die. To say, Asallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Rabbi Al-Arsh Al-Azim, An Yashfiya Ka, from Muslim, An Yashfiya Ki, for feminine, of course. I ask Allah, the Lord, uh, the great, the Lord of the great throne, to cure you. As Allah mm -hmm. al I ask Allah the great. Rabb al Arsh al the Lord of the great throne, an yashfiyaka, to cure you. To say seven times in the presence of a sick person when you visit them, you are entering a garden of paradise. La izaru fi maqtafatin min al jannah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, would accept your dua because you made an effort, you visited the sick person. And you pray for him. So do not forget, more important than taking the roses or the chocolate or the gift, to make the dua and the ruqya. Do not belittle the power of dua. And also, yustahabu tanfisu il ajab. And this is a beautiful thing only in Islam, which is a tanfisu fil ajab, even when you visit a person whom the doctor say it's a matter of a few days. Say, oh, mashallah, I heard about. Uh, another person who had the same condition and he lived for 10 years, or my uncle, or my and give examples, not the opposite. Yeah, we give them hope. Um, so we ask Allah the Great, the Lord of the Great Throne, to cure all those who are sick.